Uh, for texturing, we need to UV unwrap our model. I'm going to walk you through everything you need and then help you along the way. So for UV unwrapping, uh, we need to kind of minimize the pain. So we have added these uh, rail grades and we only need to UV unwrap one because they're all the same. So what I would do is just select all of these and then move them into a collection and then just hide them. We can unwrap this and then copy over the UV map. Uh, that's a thing you can do and I'll show you when the time is right. So I'll call this balcony and then just hide balcony. And uh, for these windows, the same thing. We only need to unwrap uh, this one. So I'm just going to call this first floor windows. Um, we are going to unwrap every single like floor window because uh, we can't really use stretch textures. So, all right, these top windows are all different. So we need them to be different. These windows can also go. Uh, first, we have to figure out if we want the building to be uh, one UV map or if we want to separate that and make different UVs for it. And I think we want two UV maps or even three just for every floor, just so it's you have HD textures, you know? What I'm going to do is just uh, separate these by a seam. And where I'm going to do that is probably around here. So just select all these edges, make sure you have every edge selected and then hit the U and then mark seam. And then here as well, you're going to make this a different UV. So hit U and mark seam. Let's get started. Uh, so we are going to open up the UV editor here and make sure you have enough room for the UV editor. You're going to be working in this uh, a lot. So, okay, uh, we can go over to uh, this vertex data thing and search for UV maps and then just call this the bottom floor. We have to change the name back to UV map later. So don't forget to do that. I'm just going to say that now I might forget, but this is a really important step. When we're going to be baking, your UV map needs to be called UV map. So for the bottom floor, I'm going to select everything by pressing L and it will cut off at the uh, mark seam point. And now I'm going to press Shift H to hide everything but our selected part. And now we are going to UV unwrap this. So you might say, all right, UV unwrap. So I press U and then Smart UV Project. Uh, no, this is not what we're going to do. This is a horrible UV map. And why is that? That's because we have all this empty space here. So in a UV map, you want to buy out your pixels. Uh, but right now we have a lot of money left. We haven't fully bought out all the pixels on this image. And that's why we want this space and this space and this space. Because now we're paying for the entire image. But we're only getting about half of the entire image. So this is a bad approach. So for UV unwrap unwrapping, you have to uh, think a lot. So this is really going to be a really intense process. Uh, the first step for UV unwrapping is just thinking of it as one of those uh, cube things you had to cut out in uh, elementary school. So it's just a piece of paper and you can fold it into a cube. Uh, you can add it in a cube and show that to you. This is what I mean. You would also have some tabs here to kind of glue together and then you would have a cube. Uh, we are going to be doing that but in 3D. The most important part is the seams and these are basically your cuts. So where are you going to cut up your model and place it on a 2D plane? And most of the time you want to separate uh, parts that have a different normal. So for example, this part is going up and it's really hard to unwrap this and then kind of unwrap this as well without making a cut in the middle. So my approach is usually to just select this and then hit U and then mark seam. So I now know that when this is unwrapped, this is going to be completely the same as in my viewport, like this. This is also taking up a lot of space, but we'll fix that later. That's just for optimization. Right now we just want to make uh, different things that have different normals, uh, also a different UV map. So I can select this edge and hit U and then mark seam. And this will be nice. We can seam this as well and do this as well. Later I'm going to uh, show you how to optimize this of course. Uh, for parts like this, we don't really want to like add a seam for one face. So imagine we 
just make this a seam and this a seam as well. And then just leave this. So when this is unwrapped, this whole part, it's kind of like just taking this, like this part, and just flipping this up and placing it on the table. So that's basically what we're doing. And you could probably do the same thing with this as well. You can just leave this out and then just make it flat because you're only working with it like this, it's just a corner. So you can just fold it the other way. When it unwrap, it looks like this, really nice. So try to do that for as much things as you can. So select this loop and this one and this one. And we can set a seam here. And then we can just unfold this part. We don't need to add in a, a seam here or here. We can just flatten that. So this is fine. We can just leave it like it is. Uh, same for this part. We can just unfold this part here. And then we have this really long thing. And this corner, we can't really unfold since it's already flat everything. So we need to add in a seam there to make it more optimized. Try to keep your seams at parts where you're not really going to notice a seam because we are going to be texturing this, of course. So how can we unwrap this? So probably just have a look. See, with the uh, smart UV project, this is <laughs> what the UV map looks like. But right now, if we just add seams on both sides, it will probably look a lot better. Yeah, it's still a little bit crooked, but we can fix That's because it's trying to unfold this, but if you unfold this, there's less space for this part here. So I think, yeah, that's pretty much all. We can now unwrap this right here. And this is not looking any better. And that's because of these large pillars here. These are taking, so this these two pillars, which are these ones, uh, because they're so tall and just sticking out, they're taking up this entire space. Uh, so what I can do is just add in some loop cuts here, or uh, seams, I mean, and then UV wrap. This is already looking better. So if you want to know uh, what you are selecting in the UV editor, you can just select one of these faces and then they will become selected in the viewport. So let's see which one is this. So that's a little bit easier to see when we set the edge length off. All right, so that's the top part here. We are having issues with that because the, this is sticking out. So just mark a seam there. A wrap. All right, nice. It's already looking better. We can also scale this. So if you're thinking, oh, I am losing so much space here, we are going to scale that later to buy our space back. But I see a hole here. All right, that's this door. Yeah, okay. Doors are always tricky, but we can fix that by just placing something in there. And now we just need to optimize it. So to do that, we are going to go over to UV and then Constraint to Image Bounds. I recommend you right click and add this to your favorites. This is going to be a really nice uh, thing to use. So Constraint to Bounds. And now if you can just select a part here, let's say this and scale it. It will not scale beyond UV map, which is really useful. All right, so to optimize this, we can just uh, move everything out of this UV bounce and then just select everything manually and place it in. So I'm going to select the back wall and constraint to image bounce and then just hit G to snap it. Uh, and then we can just uh, rotate this and just place it like here. I always like to keep my UVs uh, upright so I can actually tell what's going on you know it's easier to to tell uh, what you're doing and now I want to just move this door next to it so I'm just going to select that door by pressing L in face mode if you're pressing L it will not go past the seams so that's really nice and then hit A again uh, make sure to not overlap that's really bad just keep it a couple, uh, couple centimeters or a couple pixels above. Now I'm going to select uh, this pillar here, move that in, and then just do this until we're done. All 
Right, so now we have all of these walls together. And just not everything that's in the middle. And this as well, because this will be a lot bigger. Uh, so try to not scale anything right now. We never want to scale anything down. Uh, we only want to scale up. And how can we scale up? Well, just move everything to the bottom. If you have your constraint uh, on, then just set your pivot point to the 2D cursor and then just hit S and scale it. And it will hit the edge and this is the maximum you can scale it. And now we have just bought some pixels. The reason why we don't want to scale down is because then uh, the pixel density isn't the same anymore as with the unwrap. So some parts will have more uh, definition than other parts and that just looks weird. So yeah, try to not do that. Yeah, I think this is fine. These are now way too big in comparison. I'd rather have these be a little bit smaller because they are actually smaller. So I think I'm going to switch these out for these right here. And then move that here. And we can keep them like this. And just rotate this here. And yeah, that's really nice, really dense. So that's the difference between like proper UV unwrapping and smart UV projecting. Uh, we have a lot of, a lot more space here. Let's see if I can like do this again. This is what it looked like. And this is what we have now. So yeah, I think that's a lot better. And then we can hit Alt H and then we have our top floors back. Now we can add in another UV map, call this uh, first floor, and then just hit Alt H to get that back, and hit L to select that, and Shift H again to focus on it. And now I'm just going to do the exact same thing. You will be doing the same. I'm just going to skip over this because UV unwrapping is super boring, and I don't have much space left on my computer for these videos. So uh, yeah, just do this on your own, and we'll compare at the end. All right, so I think I'm done with the second story. Uh, this is my UV map. I have some empty space here, but there's not really something I can find to put there. Uh, so yeah, that's it. And I just wanted to show you this trick of how I uh, actually placed these windows. And that's just placing them inside of the wall. So these are the windows and I just placed them inside of the the hole here. So that's really space efficient as well. You can really buy your pixels with that. Some programs will classify this as overlapping UVs, but as you can see, nothing is overlapping. So I don't know why they would think that. When you're posting this to CG Trader, uh, they might also think this is overlapping. So keep that in mind, which is really stupid because this is way better. But yeah, that's the second story. And I'm going to do the third story as well. So I'll see you when I'm done with that. With UV unwrapping, um, it's also really useful to keep your faces aligned. So right here, we are starting with the top one and then we are just building up in sequence. This is really nice if we're going to use tile textures so everything uh, lines up correctly or somewhat correctly. And it also saves some space. All right, and this is my UV map for the uh, third floor or Second floor, I forgot. Uh, so yeah, we have these UV maps all. I can press Alt H and this is everything. So these will be overlapping, but they're going to be using different textures. I'm also going to add in some vertex groups so I know which is the top floor and which is the bottom floor. So this is the entire building unwrapped and now I just need to do the extra bits. So the windows and the balconies and all that. All right, so now I have finished the UV map for these miscellaneous parts. And I'm just going to remove uh, the inactive UV map and rename the other one UV map. And then 
for this building. I'm going to do the same thing. So this one is the active one. So remove the other one because that one contains the older UV map and name this UV map. Uh, spelled like this, this is case sensitive. And now, uh, so like here, uh, with the UV map active. So this is the blue one, the blue one is active. And this is just renderable. So the other one will have nothing, it'll just be a dot. So I remove that and have the UV map active. And just do that for every single one. The one where it's unwrapped is the one you want. And when you have done that, you can just select one of these objects uh, or all of them and then hit Ctrl J and merge them together. And now you have your nice UV map with all of your objects. And they should have the UV map as the UV map. Then we can go to the building and just rename that as well. And that should be fine.